Previously, we programmed the foundational components of a highly reusable state machine. Today, we learn how to actually apply these components to construct a procedural animation state machine tailored for environment interactions. My name is Nikki. Welcome to iHeart Game Dev. Let's get started. This is my current implementation of an abstract base state and abstract state manager, which set the foundation for my concrete state machines. You can get a full explanation about them in the original state machine video. But a lot of you have been asking, how do I use them? I'll teach you by setting up the state machine for this procedural animation. This state machine has eight scripts. Those are named as followed. Environment Interaction State Machine. Environment Interaction Context. Environment Interaction State. Approach State. Touch State. Search State. Rise State and reset state. Open the Environment Interaction State Machine. The Environment Interaction State Machine class will derive from the State Manager class set up earlier. What this means is that the Environment Interaction State Machine inherits the definition set up in the State Manager Abstract class, which actually includes the monobehavior methods. Notice that State Manager requires the generic eState enum type. We can finally implement the enum type that both our state manager and base state expect. Inside the environment interaction state machine class, we'll declare an enum, e environment interaction state. Then we'll list out each of our planned states that will be a part of this state machine search, approach, rise, touch, and reset. The e that precedes environment interaction state is standard naming conventions for enums. What this now allows us to do is pass environment interaction state machine dot e environment interaction state as the state manager's generic type. Based on the implementations of our state manager and base state, current state and the state's dictionary can only consist of classes that derive from base state that use this enum type. And the state keys of each state can now only be set to one of these five enum values. Otherwise, Unity will throw an error. Next, let's provide access to all of the components of our character. To do so, add the animation rigging namespace at the top of the file. Now we have access to types related to animation rigging. Declare serialized fields for our constraint components. Left IK constraint and right IK constraint will both be private and of type two bone IK constraint. And left multi rotation constraint and right multi rotation constraint will also be private of type multi rotation constraint. For environment interactions, we will need access to the character's speed and collider. For this project, Banana Man moves using a rigid body and capsule collider. Create two final serialized fields, rigid body of type rigid body and root collider of type capsule collider. Going forward, all of our logic will be impossible without these serialized fields being properly set in the inspector. In Unity, we can ensure that property values are set with what's known as an assertion. We can access assertions through the namespace unityengine.assertions. Let's create a new method titled validate constraints. We'll use asserts is not null method for each of the members variables we just defined. The second argument is the error message that will be thrown. So we can add a helpful context explaining what went wrong. Now we just need to invoke our validate constraints method. We can do so in the awake method of the environment interaction state machine. A state machine is designed to manage states, including creating and storing instances of each. Our state manager class implementation does so using a dictionary to store state instances behind associated keys. Environment Interaction State Machine will create and store instances of all five states listed in its e Environment Interaction State enum. To do so, we'll need to define all five of these classes. But if we look at our wire mock, we'll see an intermediary abstract class between our base state class and each of our concrete classes, environment interaction state. Let's implement this class. Environment interaction state is another abstract class that inherits from base state. Remember, base state, like state manager, requires that we set the generic e state type upon inheritance. We can pass the e environment interaction state enum that we set up as a part of the environment interaction state machine. This indicates that the classes that derive from environment interaction state 
will all inherently be associated with the five enum states of the environment interaction state machine. You may be wondering why this class exists when we already have the base state class. We've designed base state and state manager to be modular and reusable. This intermediary abstract class allows us to define methods and properties that can be used across all of the five states. But wouldn't it make sense in states from another state machine that also inherit from base state? Now, state machines have the concept of context, or a shared object that holds relevant data that can be accessed by multiple states. The context serves as a communication bridge between states, allowing them to share data and maintain consistency as the state machine transitions from one state to another. For example, the states of the environment interaction state machine are all going to need access to the two-bone IK constraints, multi-rotation constraints, and rigid body that the environment interaction state machine currently declares. While we could store and provide access to these properties directly from the state machine to each state, a cleaner implementation is to separate concerns from the environment interaction state machine. State machines are more focused on state setup and management. Instead, we'll hand off the responsibility of these shared values to a separate context file, environment interaction context. Open the environment interaction context file. In order to hand off the responsibility of the variables from the state machine to the context, let's copy and paste the member variable declarations. Then the context can expect and set the value of each in its constructor. Now these are all private member variables, but when states need to access them from the context, we can create public getter methods for each. Getter methods mean they can look at the value but cannot change them. In our environment interaction state machine class, we can create a new member variable context. After the validation method in awake, we can set context equal to a new instance of environment interaction context. Then we'll pass in the required constraint and rigid body arguments. However, the context will still be inaccessible to the states. How can we provide guaranteed access to the context for all of the state machine's concrete states? Our abstract environment interaction state serves this purpose. While it wouldn't make sense to have the context variable in the base state because the class should remain as generic as possible, this abstract middle layer between the base state and the concrete environment interaction states is perfect for declaring a protected variable that all inheriting classes require access to. Let's declare a protected context variable and have it set in the environment interaction state's constructor. This means when each concrete state is instantiated, it will now require context to be passed as an argument. The base state class we're using also has a constructor expecting an estate enum on instantiation, which is used to set the state key. Environment interaction state will also need to expect this estate state key so that it can pass it through to the base state parent. Remember, in this state machine, the state key will have to be one of the five E environment interaction states. With this initial setup for the environment interaction state, we can begin coding the five concrete states. Each state will derive from environment interaction state and have a constructor method that expects the context and its associated state key. Similar to the environment interaction state, the constructor will actually pass these arguments to the parent classes using the base keyword. Concrete states are also required to implement the abstract methods they inherit. Temporarily, we'll create blank methods for each. As we go through and build out the procedural animation code for each state, we'll update these empty methods with the missing logic. Okay, we are now at the point where the concrete states can be instantiated. In the environment interaction state machine class, create a new method titled initialize states. This method will be in charge of adding the states to the state manager dictionary. We can add a state using the dictionary's add method. Let's start with reset state. First, pass the enum associated with the state, in this case, reset. Then we'll set the value to an instance of that state. Each concrete state now requires the context to be passed in and a state key. Pass the stored environment interaction context. Then, thanks to the generic applied to the environment interaction state, we can now provide one of these five E environment interaction state values as the state key. So again, pass the reset enum to complete the instantiation. Repeat this process for the remaining states. 
Finite state machines like ours are designed to focus on one state at a time, hence the current state member variable in our implementation. We've now created instances of each concrete state, but current state has not been set. As the last step in initialize states, let's set current state equal to our newly created reset state. Index into the dictionary with the reset value of the e environment interaction state enum. Now we can just call initialize states in the awake method to set up our states whenever the state machine is enabled. With how we've set this up, the environment interaction state machine will start off with the current state set to reset state and will be running the reset state logic. To test if this implementation works, we can add a log from the enter state and update state methods of reset state. Entering play mode, success. Our environment interaction state machine is officially running. Next time, we dive into the details of the environment interaction state machine and start programming each state. But what did you think of this episode? Would you change anything about this state machine implementation? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you to the patrons and the YouTube members for the continued support of this channel. If you'd like access to this project files, as well as a few other perks, consider checking out the iHeart Game Dev Patreon. And a very special shout out to Juke, Teradev, Peter Steiner, and Tendinitis for the top tier support. If you have any questions or just want to join an awesome growing community of developers just like yourself, hop on over to the channel Discord. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.